Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, new details on how fireworks caused two house fires and at least one death locally on July 4th. And the House panel investigating the January 6th riot at the Capitol last year has called its next hearing. Well, it's a club nobody really wants to be in, the 100 plus club, and we're all in it <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Your card is in the mail. Good morning, everybody. It is 430 on your Wednesday, July 6th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're going to be in those triple digits for some time now. Yeah, Mike, what's our, the perks of being in this club? I just want to let well, everybody know this morning, the fine print. Okay. You know, if, if like, uh, you know, some of those cards, you get the punches on them, so mm -hmm. many purchases, right. and you get a free meal. I wish there was something like that. But. Right. Like a rain day, yeah, free rain you have day. 27 punches in your mm -hmm. in your 100 club card right now. So. Gotcha. So that would lead to an eventual rain day. Hopefully. I mean, that's what we want. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what we want. I want to win the lottery, too. But uh, I think the odds, it seems like nowadays, are about the same. Um, we are starting off very warm and humid, of course. Mid-upper 70s. And, yeah, the humidity has come back. You know, the usual 24-hour cycle we talk about. And still, here's that kind of steam bath sort of humidity there. New Braunfels, Seguin, Randolph, Stinson. When you get those two points, 74, 75 degrees. Um, it's wet towel sort of uh, humidity. So heat index readings right now, 80 can Canyon Lake at the airport, New Braunfels, 81-82 in Castorville. And mold did drop down about half of the previous day's reading after it had peaked on Saturday. And we are going to be up to 90 at noon, 100 for high temperature. We got bad news, worse news, a little bit of good news. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, an alert from the Frio, Frio County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff says over the last few days they have received multiple emergency calls, which appear to be due to potential drug overdoses. As a result, they're urging anyone in possession of cocaine in particular to dispose of it immediately. The sheriff says while all illegal narcotics are dangerous, it appears there's a particular batch being sold and consumed that is causing death. Right now, the Frio County Sheriff's trying to track down the source of the drugs. If you have any information that can help, call 830-334-3311. Fourth of July fireworks took a disastrous turn on Monday. In one case, one man died after lighting fireworks near Highway 90 and Frio City Road. The Bear County Medical Examiner says that 43-year-old Pablo Ruiz suffered a head injury and died from an explosion mishap. Now, officers tell us that a witness and a friend were shooting off fireworks with Ruiz, who had been drinking, and that's when police say he lit a mortar-style firework from on top of his head. Officers say he died shortly after. In another case, fireworks are believed to have destroyed two homes. Fires sparked up on Wildstone Place. That's near Loop 1604 and Bandera Road, and flames spread to two homes. No one was hurt. San Antonio remains in the high-risk category when it comes to COVID-19, and more parents are getting their children vaccinated. About two weeks ago, vaccines were greenlit for children between six months to four years old. So far, 1,077 of those kids here in Bear County got their shots. Metro Health is offering pop-up clinics for these vaccines, including one at Traders Village coming up on Saturday. Well, two Republicans on the committee investigating the riots at the U.S. Capitol are releasing new audio of graphic death threats. ABC's M. Wen has the details. I guess I can't say a whole lot more other than I hope you naturally die as quickly as possible. This morning, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger sharing a compilation of threatening messages his office has received in response to his work on the committee investigating the attack on the Capitol. You know who your family is, and we're going to get you. Get your little get your wife, go get your kids. Kinzinger is a father to a baby born earlier this year. The audio posted to his Twitter account includes more than a dozen messages. We know where you live. We're coming to your house. Gonna get you, by. Kinzinger and Liz Cheney are the only Republicans on the January 6th committee. We're going to get you. Coming to your house, son. Going to get you and Liz Cheney. <laughs> Kinzinger saying threats of violence over politics has increased heavily in the last few years, but the darkness has reached new lows. The committee's next public hearing will be Tuesday and will focus on the white nationalist groups who took part in the riot. 
While the hearings in Washington are expected to wrap up this month, a criminal investigation in Georgia looking into election interference now appears to be ramping up. A grand jury has issued subpoenas to seven advisors and allies of former President Trump, including Rudy Giuliani and Senator Lindsey Graham. Also subpoenaed, Cleta Mitchell. She was on the infamous call with Georgia's Secretary of State when Trump said he needed to find enough votes to overturn his loss to Joe Biden. Legal experts say Trump's call may have violated multiple state election laws. Trump denies any wrongdoing. In Washington, M. Wynn, ABC News. In your morning headlines, the district attorney in Uvalde, who's supposed to connect victims of the Uvalde school shooting with financial services, now facing calls for her removal. Uvalde Mayor Don McLaughlin, State Senator Roland Gutierrez, sent a letter to Governor Abbott asking him to replace Uvalde County DA Christina Mitchell Busby. Abbott appointed Busby to oversee victims' compensation and other services after the deadly massacre at Robb Elementary in May. McLaughlin claims the DA has failed to deliver compensation resources to those in need in a timely manner. McLaughlin is asking the De Texas Department of Emergency Management to take over the role. Immigrant advocates are hoping a federal appeals court will uphold an Obama-era program that prevents the deportation of thousands of immigrants brought into the U.S. as children. A Texas federal judge last year declared the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals or DACA program illegal. However, he agreed to leave the program intact for those already benefiting from it while his order is appealed. Today, three judges on the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans are set to hear arguments. Supporters of the program have planned a vigil outside the courthouse. Musician Carlos Santana suffered a medical episode last night during a performance up in Michigan. His management team says Santana was overtaken by heat exhaustion and dehydration. He was performing at the Pine Knob Music Theater, an outdoor amphitheater in Clarkston, about 40 miles outside Detroit. As he was removed from the stage, fans uh, are heard in a video cheering for the musician. The artist waved at fans as he was taken off stage. A statement on his Facebook page says he was taken to a local hospital for observation and is doing well. And time now, 437 and 77 degrees for now. Glad you're with us on this Wednesday morning. Still ahead on GMSA, what new parents need to know about using certain kinds of infant rockers that help babies sleep. And the young San Antonio Spurs get ready for the NBA Summer League games, and which tip off will later this week. We'll see if anything is obviously wrong on the roads this morning. Quick look at our first look at Transguide Interstate 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Not a lot of traffic out there, but we are seeing quite a few early bird commuters already hitting the roads. We'll keep you apprised as we head towards the top of the hour as Stephen joins us then. And taking a look outside with live cam, a, a cool 77 degrees for now compared to the triple digits we will hit later today. We'll be right back. We're looking morning sports after getting the holiday weekend off. The Spurs back at work getting their young players ready for the NBA Summer League games, which tip off later this week. Good news is their number one draft pick, ninth overall Jeremy Sohan, back on the courts after testing positive for COVID last week, just after getting to San Antonio. Now the question is, will he be available to play in the game starting Friday? It's good to see him. He's doing well, able to... Uh, come to Vegas and be with the team and be a part of it. So excited for him. It was a, it was a quick departure after the introduction. I can't keep up with the return to out of health protocols, whatever that process is. I think he's in it still, whatever that is. He's obviously out of protocols, but there's obviously a ramp up and a cardiac and a clearance deal. I don't know where he is in that. But I guess uh, with everything you know about him, he'll, he'll get up to speed pretty quickly. I yeah, I would think so. I mean, if anything, right, he'll be working with our people out there. Whatever capacity ends up being, he plays 30 minutes, he's training with them, right? It could be anything. Before we were allowed into practice Tuesday, Spurs announced the signing of the first of three first round draft picks. Is Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame. The Spurs picked up with the number 25 pick overall. All right, Spurs open up summer league play Friday at Cleveland starting at 4 p.m. Sunday. They'll take on Golden State. 
Tickets for the KSAP Big Skin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers are on sale right now at all Las Palapas locations. For just $15, you can take in all three fantastic games at the Alamo Dome August 27th. It's the very first weekend of the 2022 high school football season. Smithson Valley versus Reagan kicks off the triple header at 1130, followed by Judson versus Johnson. And then the nightcap, as we call it, has Steele going up against Brennan. If for some reason you can't make it to the Dome that day, all three games will be broadcast live here on KSAT 12, starting with our pregame show beginning at 11 o'clock. We are getting very excited about that big game weekend. Yeah, it should be a great turnout as well. And we're all going to be out there. Yes, we will. <laughs> Time now, 442, 77 degrees for now. And still ahead, important new information on baby sleep products that can keep your infant safe. Four forty five, a life saving change coming to some baby products and it's something parents should know about it involves products sold for sleep. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains some new guidelines what parents should do to be sure their babies are safe. Rocking the baby often helps get him to nod off to sleep. But as we've reported, the Consumer Product Safety Commission and two manufacturers warn, don't use these rockers for infant sleep. At least 13 deaths are tied to this Fisher-Price rocker and one death tied to this Kids 2 rocker. While companies say these rockers are not intended for sleep, we know that parents and caregivers sometimes use them for that purpose, and the same goes for other infant seats and swings. Similar to the inclined sleepers that Congress recently banned, it's the baby's reclined position that makes these products dangerous for any period of sleep. Products that place an infant in a reclined sleeping position increase the risk of suffocation, causing an infant's head to tilt forward and compress the airway. And that's what new regulations are meant to address. All infant sleep products manufactured must now meet minimum safety requirements that align with American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines. Baby should sleep alone on a flat surface. But Consumer Reports says it's okay to let your baby sleep for short stretches in the car seat while driving. Car seat design allows for babies to safely be in a semi-reclined position while also giving them the protection that they need in a crash when the car seat is installed properly in the vehicle. Be sure the child is securely harnessed. If your baby falls asleep in a car seat, rocker, bouncer, or swing, experts say move them to a safe sleep space as soon as possible. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Quick look at Transguide right now. Things look great all around town right now. I'm seeing some slowdowns and problems on Rigsby over on the east side, but I don't know what's going on out there. We'll try to get some more information coming up. But right now, the main freeways Look fantastic. There's I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. A few folks either heading home from work uh, from the overnight shift or getting a jump start on their Wednesday. Very true. And I like the shot behind you. Yeah. It's like this whole week we can celebrate the 4th of July. Every day celebrates our wonderful country. But yeah, a couple of leftover pictures. And I just love that. I mean, there and even there's the glow of the, uh, the sunset mm -hmm. right there. And this is over Lake Travis in Austin. Great shot. Mike, did we hit solstice yet, or are we not quite there yet? Yeah, we had, uh, that was back on the 21st. Okay, June. all right. So, I, yeah, I, so I, days are getting shorter. Slowly. Slowly. <laughs> but not surely. Getting, not getting any cooler. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> and they're getting shorter by maybe uh, a minute or less than that per day, but they will continue to, uh, to get shorter. We have got some clouds hanging around here as of right now. Uh, 27, just in case you keep track, 100 degree days. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you, I guess, I think, I don't know. So uh, 78 right now, 75 Balverde, Hello to said 76. And uh, yeah, it seems like these numbers overall, even in parts of the hill country, are up compared to this time yesterday. And we've got, uh, we may drop another degree or two. We'll keep some of these clouds around this morning. Bit of a breeze out there, although, and I, I just have to uh, quote Mr. Austin over there, feels like a hair dryer when it's getting up to 100 and you've got a breeze coming in here out of the, uh, the south. We'll make it through the mid and upper 80s late this morning. Again, 90 at noon, and then, yep, we're going to do it again. So you get another punch on your 100-degree card there, as we were talking about, and uh, we will continue with this. Now, the one problem that we've been dealing with, even, you know, think back to earlier in June, we were still hitting triple-digit temperatures. We 
we were getting that real big 24 hour swing in the dew points and the humidity. So we'd had the humidity in the morning, but then in the afternoon, the dew points were dropping down. That has not been the case recently where these dew points have stayed in the even low to mid 60s around here. And that's going to be the case again today. So we've got the heat index to deal with because when you get those dew points that are below 60, at least in the shade, it's slightly more comfortable. You know, you get out of a pool and it actually feels nice and refreshing and, and cool, but when the humidity stays up, so that that's the problem we've been dealing with. However, in the next few days, the um, humidity is going to be dropping down somewhat more in the afternoon. So that's one little bit of salvation, one little bit of good news we have with these blazing hot temperatures. But as of uh, today, we are still going to be seeing those heat index readings getting up into the uh, low hundreds 109 in Catula and again that high is staying put and that thing ain't going anywhere pardon my grammar over the next uh, couple of days so the forecast today we will be again 90 at noon some of those leftover morning clouds are going to be clearing out quickly by late morning and then 100 for a high temperature later on today next seven days by the way the uh, Weather Service says it is uh, really looking closely at posting some or issuing some heat advisories as we head on into maybe Friday as well as the weekend with those temperatures that are going to be well up into the hundreds. And those are actual air temperatures. We're looking at probably about uh, 103s here in town over the weekend. So, Well, altogether not rare. We usually see those at the front end of the of the extreme heat season and here we are kind of in the heart of it and they're reminding us of how dangerous it can be I guess yeah I mean because again you're you get up to 105 mm -hmm. and then you know that's one of those kind of threshold numbers depends on the person but your body you can't cool really itself cool itself that mm -hmm. much and if low temperatures you know are staying up longer overnight it takes right. longer to cool down in the evening and everything so but yeah I mean even even if there's not a formal heat advisory you know you just definitely got to watch it. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 451, 77 degrees. And coming up next, Rihanna is celebrating financial success. Plus, Blink 182's drummer is back home from the hospital. Pick three numbers 492 Fireball 4, Daily 4, 3088 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 7, 21, 25, 27, 33. And your Mega Millions 27, 31, 50, 51, 61, Mega Ball 21. Mega Player 4. Good luck. In this morning's GMA First Look, the family of Jalen Walker speaking out. Jada Walker talking to ABC News for the first time since the Akron, Ohio Police Department released body camera video showing eight of their officers shooting and killing her brother, 25-year-old Jalen Walker. The Walker family says the Jalen police are describing isn't the Jalen they knew and loved. I don't want to see him in that light because I know who he is. I just can't see myself watching somebody be gunned down or even running from the police. I'm just really sad because, like I said, out of many black men who, who have been killed and many families who experience this, even as a sister, you know, it's just, <sighs> excuse me, it's just, it's really hard. And coming up at 7 a.m., more of our exclusive interview with Jada Walker. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A famous drummer is back home from the hospital, and Rihanna reaches a financial milestone. Really, so what's happening in Hollywood? Here's ABC's Chris Watson. It was a lot. It was a lot. Travis Barker is home after he was hospitalized last accident. week with, quote, severe life-threatening pancreatitis. The Blink-182 drummer's health issue began after a routine endoscopy last month. Hours after the procedure, Barker started feeling, quote, excruciating pain. Barker married Kourtney Kardashian in May. Brianna is now the youngest self-made female billionaire in America. The 34-year-old mogul hit $1.4 billion in net worth, according to Forbes. Brianna is the only woman younger than 40 to make it to the annual list of America's richest self-made women. The musician and entrepreneur first became a billionaire last August, as well as the richest female musician in the world and the second richest female entertainer after Oprah Winfrey. Most of the singer's riches come not from her music, but from her brands Fenty Beauty, Fenty Skin, and Savage X Fenty. And celebrating birthdays today, actor-comedian Kevin Hart turns 43, rapper and actor 50 Cent is 47, and Rocky and Rambo star Sylvester Stallone is 76. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 
And time now, 456 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, the man suspected of carrying out the 4th of July massacre near Chicago has been charged with seven counts of first degree murder. And today he could be facing even more charges. Plus, rats are captured on video at a local Taco Cabana. We're going to tell you when that restaurant is expected to reopen. Well, that'll get your attention. And Trans Guide right now, 10 at UTSA Boulevard. No problems there. Steven is in studio. We'll talk to him coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. The Wednesday edition continues. Two hours of news, weather, and traffic coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. We're learning more about the suspect in the Highland Park, Illinois mass shooting from July 4th. What police are saying about the disturbing warning signs leading up to that rampage. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting at 77 degrees, which is pretty mild compared to the 103 we are expecting today. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, July 6th, and I'm calling this a wishful Wednesday. I accidentally, for some reason, decided to wear my pumpkin pie socks today. So obviously I'm dreaming <laughs> of colder temperatures around I know, here. now we need a pumpkin spice latte. Maybe we could just wish for cooler weather. And Mike's gonna say, yeah, keep on wishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and by the way, um, 103, not today. So, yeah, we're jumping the gun a little bit there with that, but it is going to start to heat up, unfortunately, uh, get even hotter as we head in toward the weekend. 78 degrees right now, and bunch of humidity out there. And look at that bottom number is at 72. That's the dew point temperature, about where it was at this time yesterday. And we've got some really high um, dew points and bunch of humidity, especially down around uh, Pleasanton, Randolph right now. We're going to be up to 100 again today. We did it again yesterday and just continue to chalk them up throughout the rest of the week. The aquifer, big hit of down nine tenths of a foot. And as I always say, check with your local municipality as far as any sort of water restrictions or what water restrictions may be in place. Mold is on the moderate side. It did drop by, oh, roughly half of the previous day's reading. With all the humidity, of course, yep, we got a heat index, <clears throat> excuse me, to deal with right now. We are in the uh, Oh, 80s here at in town. 82 is what it feels like. Casterville right now and 78, 79 right now at Randolph, 78 at Stinson. And that's been one of the problems is the fact that, yeah, warm and humid this morning and then triple digits with some humidity still in the afternoon. So unlike last month when on a lot of days we'd start with humidity in the morning and then it would really dry out quite a bit in the afternoon. That's not the situation. So that's been adding sort of putting salt in the wound, if you will. Hotter through the weekend. Yeah, this is what uh, Steph was alluding to this weekend because we are looking at uh, 103s by Saturday and Sunday and next week. Still hot. Any relief insight, anything. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, good morning. What's uh, what's cooking? Oh, <laughs> definitely not the temperature over here, Mike. Uh, right now, Fort Dana McCullough, we did see some flashing lights out there. Uh, over here, you also notice that we do have some barrels that are placed out there. That is because we have some textile crews that are working on the pavement. Uh, that started overnight, and it should be continuing at least up until 7 this morning. We still see those cones out there, so make sure that you plan ahead. We could possibly expect to slow down a little bit later on as the morning does progress. But right now it's not looking too bad. We're not seeing anything that's going to show a slowdown just yet. Earlier there was a little bit of a slowdown off of uh, 410, not far from Riddiman, but we're not seeing that causing any issues for drivers at this point in time. But if you do have to head out the door and your destination is the Alamo City, let's check those travel times for you right now. If you are coming in from Bernie on I-10, the eastbound lanes, 25 minutes at this hour, and it's a 26 minute drive on 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde to downtown San Antonio and a 30 and 26 minutes on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So no delays there, but back here on Transguide, we'll continue to keep a close eye in this particular area and other construction spots. Again, make sure you have those phones handy for you coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Happening today, the man accused of driving the truck and the migrant tragedy is set to go before a federal judge here in San Antonio. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. And good morning, Jonathan. Do we know what to expect from today's hearing? 
Good morning, Stephanie. Well, during today's hearing, Omero Zamorano Jr. is expected to learn if he will be eligible for a trial now. According to court documents, we know Zamorano spoke on a cell phone with 28-year-old Cristian Martinez about the alleged smuggling event. Now, two other suspects were also arrested but only faced federal weapons charges. Now, 53 migrants died when the hot trailer was found near Quintana and Casson Drive. As of Monday, 35 of the 53 victims have been conclusively identified and the remaining 18 victims have been potentially identified. The victims range in age from just 13 years old to 55. A memorial is being kept up for the victims. Now we both, uh, we know that both Martinez and Zamorano are in federal custody and have been faced, uh, have been charged with uh, crimes. Now if found guilty, they could be facing the death penalty again if they are found guilty in a trial. This is a case that we're gonna continue to follow closely and bring you the latest in our later newscast, make sure to keep up with us at our website, ksat.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. The search for a missing man on Canyon Lake is over. A family member says Robert Berlingeri's body was recovered Tuesday afternoon, two days after he disappeared. Canyon Lake Fire, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and Hayes County teams recovered the body around 2.30 to 3 o'clock Sunday. Berlin Jerry was holding his two-year-old toddler when their boat was hit by a wake, knocking Berlin Jerry and his daughter into the water. The daughter's mom jumped in. Together, the parents were able to keep the child above water. Other boaters were able to save the mom and daughter. When they tried to get to the man, he had gone under. I've grown up in the lake. I know what lake life is. You have frequent accidents that happen. Uh, ultimately, the guy's a hero. It's just tragedy for the family. Yeah. The boater says the tragedy on the lake is a grim reminder that people need to be careful. Berlin Jerry's drowning is the third at Canyon Lake this year. The San Antonio Fire Department's ambulance bus or AMBUS has been used in two recent tragedies, one on Quintana Road and the other Robb Elementary in Uvalde. It is one of 16 AMBUSes positioned across the state through the Texas Emergency Medical Task Force. Primarily, it is used for hurricane evacuations of hospitals and on-scene rehab for fire crews and mobile ICUs to treat injured people. A spokesperson for the department says it's also part of their mass casualty response. In the case of the people found dead in the back of an 18-wheeler and the Uvalde shooting, it was used as a mobile morgue to transport bodies to the medical examiner's office. It's frustrating to know that we weren't able to do more, but at the same time knowing that they can be moved in a dignified manner. We can give them the respect they deserve. There are two other ambuses in our area, one in New Braunfels and the other in Shirts. Each one can carry 24 seated patients or 20 patients in beds. As far as staffing, there's always a driver and at least four medics on board. This morning, many are grieving the loss of a seventh person who died recently from their injuries after that gunman opened fire from a rooftop in Highland Park, Illinois. Today, we are learning more about the suspect. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. The suspect, police believe, perched himself atop a roof in Highland Park, Illinois and fired a barrage of bullets into a July 4th parade of families now charged with seven counts of first degree murder. These are just the first of many charges that will be filed against Mr. Cremo. Authorities say Robert Cremo III planned his attack for weeks and carried out the rampage dressed in women's clothing. Investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity. Police say the 21-year-old passed four background checks before he bought the high-powered rifle used in the attack. I was trying to see where it was coming from, and then I looked up at the Ross Cosmetics building, and he was, he was shooting from there. Illinois State Police admits they've met with Cremo before. In April 2019, they were notified that Cremo attempted suicide. Then again, that September, a family member called police to say Cremo, quote, was going to kill everyone. Police confiscated a dozen knives, but no other actions were taken. Every town for gun safety suggesting Illinois' red flag law could have prevented the mass shooting, saying it looks like the shooter exhibited some dangerous warning signs, but tools are only useful when they are taken out of the toolbox. Vice President Kamala Harris, not far from Highland Park, renewing calls for an assault weapons ban. We need to end this horror. We need to stop this violence and we must protect our communities from the terror of gun violence. You know, I've said it before, enough is enough. 
Still no word yet on a possible motive. If convicted, Cremo would be sentenced to life in prison without parole. An arraignment is set for tomorrow morning. M1, ABC News, Washington. 509, 77 degrees. And still ahead, why TikTok is doing away with one of its features in the U.S. and the U.K. A video showing rats inside a local taco cabana has many people shocked. We'll tell you when that location is expected to reopen. And we're in the 70s for right now. We're expecting triple digits today and throughout the rest of the week. And get this, it's going to be even warmer this weekend. We'll be right back. I'm going to die. Are you seeing this? It's not what you want to see when you pull up to any restaurant. A woman recorded at least four rats running around this taco cabana in Leon Valley. This is off of 410 and Bandera Road. Rita Longoria was hoping to pick up food early Sunday morning. Instead of employees, she saw rats moving around the kitchen. The TikTok video she posted now has nearly 70,000 views. Our crew went by the restaurant yesterday. It was closed. A sign on the door apologizes for the inconvenience. Longoria says she posted the video to alert others. It was disgusting. It was like unreal. It was unbelievable shock. I wanted it to blow up not for myself. I wanted it to blow up because people needed to know. I mean, people can get sick, you know. All right, so the restaurant says the pest migrated from an outside source within the previous 48 to 72 hours. In a statement, Taco Cabana says the location was closed immediately for inspection and, quote, extensive sanitation was completed, end quote. This Taco Cabana location in Leon Valley will reopen to customers today. Hi now, 514 and 77 degrees for now. Up next, details on how a hacker reportedly stole the personal data of one billion Chinese citizens. Also next, Stranger Things 4 reaches another big record on Netflix. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with rebelsis. Study once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may worsen and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down Ask your health care provider about Rebelsis today. In today's Tech Bites, TikTok is reportedly scaling back plans to expand its live shopping feature to the U.S. The Financial Times says TikTok's efforts to get users to buy via live streams hasn't caught on in test markets in Europe, but the idea is popular in several Asian countries. The personal information of one billion Chinese citizens is now reportedly in the hands of a hacking group. The group claims to have obtained the information from a police database. All of it is being offered for sale for about $200,000. And a strange milestone on Netflix, Stranger Things has passed the one billion hour mark in worldwide viewing. It's the first English language series on Netflix to reach the milestone sitting behind the Korean hit Squid Games, but Stranger Things still has about three weeks to pass Squid Games. You know, I woke up this morning thinking Netflix crashed, but it was all just a bad stream. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. <laughs> Crickets over here for that one. <laughs> 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. What do you think? Well, I'm still running up that hill from this weekend. That finale was really good. I get it. Yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> All right, let's get a look right now at Transguy. Thankfully, nothing major to, uh, to talk about this morning. 35 at New Braunfels. 
Seen just a few more folks out there. Really, we've been starting the morning pretty much the same all week so far. Just a few folks getting their day started and not really encountering a whole lot of issues. But keep in mind, 410 at McCullough, we saw some flashing lights out there. Crews are working on the pavement. Should be wrapping at 7 this morning, and we're going to have more details on that as the morning does go on. But it's not impacting anyone's drive time. In fact, we're not seeing really anything that's causing a slowdown at this point. But we see a lot of those active construction spots right there on our map. Take a look at what's happening here at 410. This is going to be taking place a little bit later uh, tonight, Wednesday, July 6th, up until Friday, July 15th, about a week or so. 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, you can expect a single northbound main lane closure on the Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Now, that will lead to the Glebedo Road closure to West Military Drive, and what's going to be going on there is some rail work. So prepare for that if you are an overnight or an early morning commuter. But of course, this information is on our website. Grab those phones, open up your camera app, and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the case that traffic page that has a list of the current closures taking place in your area and anything else impacting your drive time. Thank you, Stephen. All right, picture this uh, 3 3 30 yesterday afternoon. I look outside, open the blinds, decide if I want to go check the mail and go. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Later today. in the evening. Maybe. Yeah, on my yeah. way home this morning. That's maybe. true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's tough to it's tough to go outside. It yeah. is. And uh, prayers for anybody that works outside yes. construction, roofers, uh, road pavers, anybody. Uh, God bless you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I know we say this every single day, but as all the experts say, hydrate before you even go out there. And we're, you know, we're not really getting into band season yet or anything like that. But still, I mean, if kids have any sort of outdoor activities, lots and lots of water. All right. Beautiful sunset. That is absolutely gorgeous out there. Nice to be inside looking at that sunset picture. Clouds hanging around this morning. Uh, very warm temperatures. Normal low is 74. We are standing at 78 right now. Mid upper 70s throughout most all of the area. And we got plenty of humidity as well. So temperatures won't move that much uh, degree, uh, perhaps degree or two the rest of the morning. And a decent breeze out there right now, which is really doing nothing more than just continuing to pump in all the humidity and there's plenty of it out there. Mid upper 80s late this morning, obviously a lot more sunshine. Again, the same temperature profile as we've seen the past couple of days, mid upper 90s in the early afternoon hours, and we are going to be chalking up one more triple digit temperature and a, again, a decent breeze today. But again, like Mark always says, it feels like a hair dryer out there. 102 for the heat index today, 105 Pleasanton, 109 in Catula. Victoria is looking at a heat index today up to 107, and that's because we're not really losing the humidity, it's not mixing out as much as it was even a few weeks ago when we were still in triple digits, but we'd have the morning humidity and then it would drop down somewhat in the afternoon. It does look like though the uh, indications are we are going to see lower humidities in the afternoons as we go in toward the weekend. So that will be one little bit of a saving grace. Satellite picture right now, uh, nothing really going on. You can sort of see as this gets to the end of the loop, some of those low clouds developing around here. And the thing to take away from this picture, a couple of different things uh, up to the north, all of the activity is pretty much moving straight west to east and then if you step back and look and draw a big circle right in here that's the high which is Park just about over, say, Texarkana right now, and that's what's sitting on top of us and forcing everything around us, sort of pushing down in the atmosphere, not allowing anything to develop at all. And that is, you know, for all, pretty much that high has been sticking around since early or mid May when we started in with these triple digit temperatures, and it's not going anywhere. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature, yep, one more day, 100. And tomorrow, another day, and another, and another. And uh, as I mentioned last half hour, Weather Service has indicated that it may uh, start posting some heat advisories going into this weekend. Again, even though there's nothing formally posted, obviously, just, you know, be, 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 be very careful mm -hmm. when you... <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you repeat yourself with this heat uh, when you're outside at all and really no relief in sight going into the first part of next week. And kind of give us uh, some framework here, my context. Uh, is this historically the hottest time of year or is that yet to come? That's yet to come. That's okay. the usually first couple of weeks of August. August when the normal average high temperature is up to 97 mm -hmm. degrees. Right. So, yeah, we're not even there yet. I wonder if it'll balance out maybe later. 
We'll see. It'll be interesting for the start of school this year. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, 523, 77 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Christian Bale talks about his Thor love and thunder villain role and James Cameron starts back about fans criticizing Avatar. 526 news this week from the big screen worlds of Thor and Avatar. CNN's Rick Damagella has the stories in the Hollywood Minute. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. Christian Bale stars as Gore the God Butcher, the antagonist of Thor Love and Thunder, director Taika Waititi's follow-up to Thor Ragnarok. A very different thing uh, than I've ever done uh, before. Very good crowd of people uh, uh, to be working with, with Tyker at the helm and Chris and Natalie and Tessa and everybody else involved. Uh, really something else. And, uh, you know, his name is self-explanatory, Gore the God Butcher, but also Tyker added an element uh, to it that people, uh, audiences might be surprised by. Thor Love and Thunder strikes theaters Friday. Well, I just I just love this story. It's James Cameron can add Troll Fighter to his list of accomplishments. In an expletive-laden interview with Empire Online about the upcoming Avatar The Way of Water, Cameron says he isn't worried about online trolls criticizing the original Avatar. Ranked as the highest grossing movie worldwide with $2.8 billion, Avatar will see a re-release in September, followed by The Way of Water in December. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And real quick side note is telling Steph there's early Oscar buzz for Christian Bale in Thor, God, and was it called? Oh, I know. Love, love and Thunder? Yeah. Yeah, Love and yeah, Thunder. Love and Thunder. It's yeah, an interesting so title. <laughs> we'll have to check it out. 528, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, how the U.S. plans to snub Russia at this week's G20 Me. Plus, if you're ahead of the movies, why Tuesdays may be the day. We'll tell you about some new discounts courtesy of AMC Theaters. And summertime is here, and with it comes a backyard barbecue get-together. So ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to have some pro tips for making your home party ready. Making headlines this morning, the U.S. set to further criticize Russia at this week's G20 summit. And many days of triple digits, and now we're looking forward to some more this week. Uh, right now, though, 77 degrees. We've made it to Wednesday, July 6th. Good morning. Yeah, happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week so far, but I hope you're finding ways to stay cool. Days and days of dangerous heat have settled in across South Texas. Here's Mike with more. Yeah, and uh, we are looking, unfortunately, at even hotter temperatures as we head in toward the weekend. We've been talking about that, how it would be warming up and looks like it may be even hotter than uh, even what we thought the past couple of days. 78 degrees as the current temperature. And then, of course, we've got that higher dew point out there. And the problem that we've been dealing with is, yes, the dew point does drop down its usual cycle in the afternoon, but not as much as you'd hope for. So we still have, you know, it's 100 degrees and then still some of that humidity hanging around here. So we've got those heat index to heat indices, I should say, to uh, deal with, uh, which right now is 81 degrees out there at the airport. 82 is what it feels like in Castroville. Uh, light amount, excuse me, moderate amount of mold. It dropped by about half of the previous day's reading. Of course, the update account will come out later on this morning. And again, 100 for high temperature later on today, 90 at noon. Weekend forecast, ugh. Grin and Barrett's. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. We'll talk about that and see if there's any changes down the road. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Yeah, it's been pretty quiet over here, Mike. Thankfully, not a lot to talk about. US 90 at 36. The morning is off and people are moving and not really encountering any trouble on the road. 281 at Grayson. Just be careful for that curve there. You always want to make sure you follow the speed limit. But other than that, we've really not seen a whole lot out there this morning. Earlier, we told you about some work being done off of 410 at McCullough. Looks like that work actually got cleared up sooner rather than later, which is good news, especially as we're inching closer minute by minute to 6 a.m. But always be prepared. I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. Looks like the commute is picking up. All right, showing you the map, really just a lot of those active construction spots. And as the morning progresses, we'll continue to give you those updates. But right now, nothing is going to slow you down just yet. Perfect time to head out the door and maybe get those errands done, beat the heat and beat the traffic. Let's take a look at these travel times for you right now. 28 minutes on I-10 westbound. 
down. Still pretty green from Seguin. Uh, and right now we are looking at a 33 minute drive time on 87 northbound. If you're heading up from Lavernia and right now 28 minutes for our friends down in Floatisville to the Alamo City. So no delays here just yet, but make sure to drive safe. 1604 at Spurs Ranch. Uh, pretty quiet there. We'll continue to give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now to late breaking news. Firefighters in West Bear County are battling a house fire. It's happening in a neighborhood near Loop 1604 in Petranco on a street called Stable Glen Drive. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what have you found out so far? Well, good morning. We're still waiting to get an official word from firefighters here. They're in the middle of things here, in the thick of it. But we can see that at least one house is on fire. You can see flames coming from the top, the roof of that one house. Now, we have heard talk that firefighters were concerned about those other homes next to it, and that is what they're trying to do, stop those flames from spreading. Out here on the street, uh, uh, there are several nervous people standing by, people who live in that home that's on fire, as well as the ones on either side of it. They're all just sort of uh, bringing their hands, hoping that firefighters can minimize the damage here from this fire. Uh, we heard this fire break out probably about a half hour ago. Bear County, uh, several districts are here trying to put this out. This is a very large house that is on fire here in the 900 block of Stable Glen. And uh, this fire actually is, seems to be growing. It has grown in the time that we've been here. Flames just shooting out of the roof right now, as you can see, and they're doing their best uh, with that ladder truck and the firefighters on the ground just trying to keep this thing from getting out of control. Uh, we, we do have several houses, as you can see, that are very close by. So uh, right now it is just touch and go as firefighters try to bring this under control. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, more to come from Katrina there at that scene. We'll continue to monitor it in West Bear County this morning. More fallout after the mass shooting in Uvalde. State Senator Roland Gutierrez and Uvalde's mayor says the victims are not getting the compensation in a timely manner. This is from the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center. All right, Jonathan Goto joins us live with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Yes, in a letter, Gutierrez says Governor Greg Abbott's appointed Uvalde District Attorney Christina Mitchell Busby to oversee the funds for victims and additional services. He even says a family nearly had their power cut off due to delays in payment. In other mm -hmm. cases, Gutierrez says the money is insufficient. We spoke, uh, we heard from him. Uh, take a listen. Our constituents need to have the resources that they need in place, and they need them now. And so what we've asked is to if we're asked the governor to bring one of his own, one of the other agencies that he's in charge of, the Texas Department of Emergency Management. Now, Gutierrez wants the Texas Department of Emergency Management to be placed in charge of the services and funding. Both he and Uvalde Samara are calling on the governor to make this happen. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. The U.S. plans to snub Russia at an international meeting this week. It's the latest spat amid tensions between the two superpowers. CNN's Amy Kiley also reports on the worry that Olympian Brittany Griner, who's on trial in Russia, is caught in the middle. The U.S. Secretary of State won't be scrambling into place for this week's G20 photo. Yes, Antony Blinken is heading to Indonesia today for the foreign minister's meeting. But U.S. and European officials say he likely won't go anywhere. He might run into his Russian counterpart. That means no photo ops and absolutely no peace talks. No conversation about Ukraine without Ukraine. It's the latest tit-for-tat amid U.S.-Russian tensions. Supporters of WNBA star Brittany Griner say they're worried she's caught in the middle. She's on trial in Russia on drug charges, but the U.S. says she is wrongfully detained. It is in the Russians' interest to have this be as high profile as, as possible because they can drive a harder bargain when they want to try to get a hostage released. Critics say the U.S. should do more to help her. Let's pretend like it's Tom Brady. Will we have to sign a petition in? The State Department says it would give the same assistance to any American in her situation. We are doing everything we can. But not everyone buys that. It's a statement about the value of women. It's a statement about the value of a black person. It's a statement about the value of a gay person. The White House says President Joe Biden has read a handwritten letter from Griner. In it, she says she's afraid of being stuck in a Russian cell indefinitely. These places are nothing short of horrible. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 
and the FDA has issued a stay of an order requiring Juul Labs to pull its products off the market in the U.S. The move is temporary. The agency said in a statement it decided, quote, there are scientific issues unique to the Juul application that warrant additional review. The FDA's June 23rd denial order for Juul came amid issues with its study data and concerns its products were encouraging dangerous habits among young people. Juul Labs disagreed and Juul products can remain for a sale while a federal court reviews the FDA order and Juul's arguments. The Endangered Species Act has been restored. A federal judge in California has overturned Trump era rules that change how the government qualifies species for federal protections. The 2019 policies were seen as a way to make it easier for fossil, fossil fuel companies to drill or mine. Biden administration announced last year it would be reviewing those actions, but some conservation groups were frustrated by the government's slow pace. They, along with the state of California, sued to roll back the changes. A judge sided with them, saying there's no evidence the Biden administration wanted to keep the Trump era policies in place. Time now, 539 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead, if you're staying at a hotel during your summer vacation, why you may need to pack your patience as well when it comes to hotel staffing. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are expecting another triple, triple digit day and a triple digit week. We'll be right back. In your morning consumer headlines, film buffs have a new reason to see more movies over the next few months. AMC Theaters now offering $5 discount Tuesdays. So tickets will be just $5 plus tax for all members of the AMC Stubbs program, which is free to join. Discount Tuesdays has already begun. It runs through the end of October. To sweeten the deal, AMC also has popcorn and drink specials set for Tuesdays. Travelers this summer should be prepared to carry their own luggage and go easy on housekeeping staff. That's because a large majority, 97% in fact, of U.S. hotels say they are understaffed. That's according to a survey from the American Hotel and Lodging Association. About half of 500 hotels polled last month say they are severely understaffed. Group says it's trying to fill 130,000 vacant positions nationwide. Wow. They say they are hoping to entice future employees with higher wages, more benefits, and flexible hours. Time now, 543 and 77 degrees for now. Up next, Animal Defense League back with another pet that needs a new home this morning. Well, Julie is here from the Animal Defense League, and oh my goodness, I don't think there's anything prettier than a black <laughs> cat with green eyes. I know. Just, uh, do, can you look at the camera, please? Yeah, look, look. Look, look they're right it's there. Pretty right there, camera girl. Too. Yes, who's oh, this baby? Okay, so this is Snail. Mm -hmm. um, Snail is only two months old. She's one of our foster kittens, and she is just so well adjusted and loving. You know, that's one of the great things about our foster program is that the kitten they get a chance to get loved on so um, they're ready to be with families and with mm. people they're they're just really well adjusted and happy and if you'd like to foster I mean you can foster any age from itty itty bitties you know where you're gonna be up in the middle of the night with all the bottle feedings and everything to a little bit older ones and you can set the amount of time that, that you would like to foster as well and they can use plenty of volunteers and plenty of fosters and plenty of adoptions on cats because you're I mean cats just everywhere basically right yes it is kitten season okay. so and they are getting adopted really quickly oh, because okay. everybody loves kittens. They're so cute, but we have tons of them. Okay. So we encourage everybody to come see us. Um, in fact, um, starting July 11th, it's going to be National Adoption Week with PetSmart. Mm -hmm. And we are inside the Everyday Adoption Center in the Windcrest location at PetSmart. So we will be celebrating National Adoption Week all week long. So we'll have amazing pets ready for adoption, tons and tons of kittens. And then all the pets that we have in the EAC, the Everyday adoption center they're all smaller pets like okay. 35 pounds or less so like just really easy to adopt desirable cute cute pets okay well so. if you'd like more information about that and again that uh, that adoption special or the adoption week is coming up next week but for this week just head on out there to 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo 655-1481 thank you dear 548
Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It looks like it's getting just a tad bit busier. I'm looking at a few of these shots at Transguy 35 at New Braunfels. Check it out. We have a few more folks that are getting their morning started early with us, maybe grabbing that cup of coffee, a matcha latte, who knows? But right now, it looks like we are getting a few more folks there at 37 at Pecan Valley as well. But always be prepared. Uh, thankfully, nothing major is going to slow you down. We haven't really detected any slowdown, just a few more vehicles. So you can see it right there on the map. Lots of active construction, and we know as the morning does progress and we see more people, that will likely impact the commute and slow a few folks down. So be prepared, especially over here off of I-10 in Kendall County. We mentioned this the other day, and anytime you drive up on I-10, perhaps in the west or eastbound lanes, you notice that there is a lot of work being done on the US-87 bridge there. Right now, we're going to be seeing a traffic shift overnight. So expect this to last up until Friday, July 8th. It's from 9 in the evening to 5.30 in the morning. Various main lane closures in in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. So prepare for that and make sure that you slow down anytime you see those crew members out there. They are working to make the roads a better place. But back here at Transguide I-10 at ProBent, it does look like it is uh, getting a little bit busier. Of course, we're going to be watching things throughout the morning, but as always, make sure you do the same. Guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great advice. Mike has one of the toughest, toughest jobs at KSAT these days. Oh, yeah. Same song and dance and his feet hurt. <laughs> If it was, you know, talking about nice weather and all that, that would be a, a different, you right. know, an easier dance and song. But when you have to keep talking about the uh, triple digit temperatures, yeah, that gets a little bit tough. Um, we've got a beautiful picture of the moon. It is the waxing crescent right now. And one week from today is going to be the full moon on the 13th. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot there. So you can see a couple of clouds are hanging around right now, and it's going to be a very similar day to what we had past couple of days. All right, you know, we talk about the 100 degree days. However, uh, Justin Horn came up with a, an interesting stat, and this is since May 1st. Back in April, we did hit a couple of days that were up into the upper 90s, but the number of days we've been at 95 degrees or above is 55 going back to the first day of, uh, of May. 27 days, of course, we've been at 100 and we're not even up to a normal high temperature of 95 degrees as of yet, you know, because we always talk about the psychological thing. It's 100 is it that much different than 99 still blazing hot. But yeah, 55 days that we have been at 95 degrees or above that ever since the 1st of May and boy, there is no relief. And again, the, the hottest time of the year historically is still yet to come up in the would excuse me in the uh, first couple of weeks of August 78 right now here in town 79 Castroville and 78 Canyon Lake temperatures will pretty much stay steady fluctuated a degree or two in the next couple of hours. A few clouds hanging around here. More sunshine, of course, same scenario as yesterday and the day before that and the day before that 90 at noon. And yeah, we're going to rack up another uh, triple digit day again today. And of course, it's got the heat index to deal with. That's been as I keep emphasizing one of the, the issues in the afternoons have been so miserable is that the humidity just really doesn't, as we call it, mix out all that much. So there's still some left over even in the afternoons. We usually have it in the morning and then it goes away, but this has been sticking around. It should be drier in the afternoons as it's looking right now as we go on in toward the uh, the weekend. And uh, big picture of things, yeah, a lot of activity up to the north of us, but it's just not coming around here. And quick check on the tropics. Once again, there is still, other than a few clouds out there, nothing that the Hurricane Center is flagging as of right now. Nothing to even raise an eyebrow with the, uh, the Hurricane Center. So forecast today, 90 partly cloudy skies today at noon and then high temperature today does make it up to 100 and we are going to continue with the triple digits. And again, the Weather Service has indicated they may be issuing some heat advisories as we head in toward the weekend with those hotter temperatures. And who would be included in that? Probably the majority is indicating down to the uh, southeast where there's going to still be a lot of humidity around there. So even much higher heat index readings going into the weekend. But it's just going to be a blistering weekend. Well, the pattern has really shifted. I mean, we were seeing those coastal showers try to wait, make their way in for a little while there. And that's the little bit of hope that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a couple of sea breeze showers even later on this week. You can't rule right. them out completely, but then can they make it further inland? That no, is the big just, question. That, yeah, mark. That, that's the, the big problem with it. So, and, yep. you know, okay, yeah, well, nothing, nothing changing. Maybe later for some relief. <laughs> okay.
how much later is the question. <laughs> we are all grinning and bearing it. Yes. yes. 553, 77 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, four, nine, two, fireball four, daily four, three, zero, eight, eight, fireball three. Cash five number seven, 21, 25, 27, 33. And we have mega millions, 27, 31, 50, 51, 61, mega ball 21, mega plier four, good luck. Check out this race to see who makes the cut. Literally, this race where different types of lawnmowers are used and all types of blades are used. Racers competed for the World Championship title over in England. The engines were all the same in this grassroots motorsport. Get it, grassroots. The lawnmower races happen the same weekend as the Formula One British Grand Prix. Have you met Austin Andrade, the San Antonio native calculates taxes by day and pumps iron by night just in case you missed it. Uh, you can now watch this man trying to crush the competition hosted by the world's strongest man. Andrade did a 100, rather 820 pound deadlift and farmers carry 420 pounds in each hand. I was good enough to place him at the top of the list among other strong men around the world. Read more online at ksat.com. More to come on GMSA at 6, including the big mix-up at Smithson Valley High School after the wrong student crown valedictorian. We have the details. And we'll tell you about a big surprise for one of the survivors of the Robb Elementary School shooting. And Stephen is tracking traffic out there. C-35 at New Braunfels Avenue right now. Uh, heavier traffic. We, looks like we've got a vehicle with this hazard lights 37 at Fair Avenue. And we'll check in with the Mike's forecast. We know it's going to be hot. How hot? Wait till you see the weekend forecast. It is a draining. That is for sure. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The man accused of being involved in the migrant tragedy is set to go before a federal court judge. What he can expect coming up on GMSA. A hacker allegedly steals the personal data from one billion Chinese citizens. We're gonna have those details. And we're gonna show you a stunning sight at a Leon Valley Taco Cabana. We'll show you a video that captured several rats wandering around the kitchen. And it's been 27 days of triple digits, and that trend is expected to continue this week. We're going to be checking in with Mike very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, July 6th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're staying cool. Yesterday, we went to the splash pad at Yanaguana Garden, and what a relief for a short amount of time. The water stayed liquid. It didn't instantly evaporate in the <laughs> no, afternoon heat. You know, I imagine there was steam out there, but no, the kids were having fun. We are making light of it, but of course, this is a dangerous situation, especially when you string it together. Now, how many days, Mike? Uh, she, at? she was the bearer of bad news, 27, 27 and yeah. we are going to continue uh, just racking them up all the way through the rest of the week, as well as into the weekend. And I've been uh, talking about this morning already. The weather service has indicated that going in toward the weekend, they're probably going to be issuing some heat advisories. I mean, even if there's nothing formally posted where you are, you just have to, to really take it easy. And, you know, being a splash pad or a pool or something like that, the one the one issue we've been dealing with is still some leftover humidity in the afternoon. So it's not, uh, it doesn't really it does cool you down somewhat, but if we had drier air, you'd be in that splash pad or hop out of the pool and you'd actually be chilly because the water would evaporate so quickly and easily from your body. But that's not the situation since we do have that humidity left over in the afternoon. And that's just what's kind of adding to the, again, salt to the wound, if you will. 78 degrees right now, 79 Castroville, 78 Canyon Lake, mid 70s in the uh, hill country. Heat index readings, yep, add a few degrees to that because of that humidity, which is usually the case we 
have it in the mornings and then it does drop down in the afternoon, but it's still been hanging in there somewhat in the afternoon. So we're dealing with those heat index readings it should be dropping down somewhat though by the uh, the weekend lower heat indices. Uh, mold is on the moderate side. It did drop down from yesterday's reading. Temperatures will stay pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning. We've got a bit of a breeze out there, but again, like Mark describes, it's like a hair dryer. Doesn't really help that much. 90 today at noon, and then we are going to be topping off at triple digit readings again today. What is in store for the weekend as well as going into next week? Any changes at all? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Well, nothing here on Transcad, Mike. We've really not seen a whole lot of activity out there this early in the morning. 37 at Fair Avenue looks pretty fair out there, but be on the lookout because unfortunately, while these Transcad cameras are really showing a lot of pavement and easy commute, we are reporting our first issue of the morning. Now, according to Texas, this is over in the northwest side of San Antonio. As they bring you in, you can see it right there on your map. A crash reported at loop 1604 eastbound, not far from John Peace Boulevard. So uh, keep in mind, it's early enough to where we're really not going to see an impact with delays just yet because there's not really a lot of people out there. But this is near an uh, area where we see some active construction. So expect a slowdown. We'll probably see that if first responders are still out there working to clear this mess up. But I'll call our friends at Transguide, find out what's going on there and see if we can get some uh, information for you. Hoping everybody's OK, though. Now let's go ahead and check those travel times if you're going to be heading into San Antonio 28 minutes is still a pleasant drive from Pleasanton 37 northbound coming in from Castorville. It's going to be about half an hour in those eastbound lanes on Highway 90 and your arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes. So no worries there. Just make sure to drive safe. Give yourself plenty of time. But back here at Transguide, see how the morning commutes picking up. They're getting a lot more folks out. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and again have an update on that crash on the northwest side of San Antonio in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Huge flames have been lighting up the night sky over one neighborhood in far west Bear County. They're coming from a home uh, on fire not far from Loop 1604 and Petranca Road. Katrina Weber is live at the scene in the 900 block of Stable Glen. And Katrina, did everyone make it out okay? I still have not been able to talk to anyone with the fire department, but I did track down the family who lives in this home that's on fire. They told me they all made it out safely. Now, also uh, getting out of their homes are some of the neighbors who are worried that fire might spread. Right now, it looks like firefighters are starting to get the upper hand. I could still see a few little flames, but nothing like what we had earlier. In fact, let me give you a look at the video so you can see how those flames were shooting up into the air when we got here. This fire broke out right around uh, 4 30 or so, uh, and firefighters have been here ever since trying to put this thing out. They were concerned that the fire would spread to the homes next door, and the people in those homes got out just as a precaution in case there was some danger. Uh, again, no official word from firefighters yet, but the woman who lives in the home that's on fire told me she believes it was started by a barbecue grill in the backyard. Uh, we are still waiting to confirm that with firefighters, but that is her belief that that's how this fire started. It did look like it was on the back side of the house when we got here, but it certainly moved its way through and again, flames shooting out of the roof. As far as we know, no one was injured. And again, uh, everyone in this home has made it out safely. Reporting live in far west Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Keep us posted. 605, we are beginning to learn all the names of the victims involved in the migrant tragedy and happening today a hearing. We know the driver of the truck is set to go before a federal judge here in San Antonio. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the latest details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, uh, in today's hearing, Omero Samarano Jr. is expected to learn if he will be eligible for bail. But according to do, uh, court documents, Samarano spoke on a cell phone with 28-year-old Cristian Martinez about the alleged smuggling event. Now, 53 migrants uh, died when the hot trailer was found near Quintana and Cassian Drive. Two other suspects were also arrested but only faced federal weapons charges. Now, as of Monday, 35 of the 53 victims have been conclusively identified and the remaining 18 victims have been potentially identified. The victims range in age from just 13 years old to 55. A memorial is being kept up for the victims. Now, this is a case that we're going to continue to follow closely. Of course, you can keep up with us in our later newscasts and online at our website, KSET.com, for the latest details. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News.
Jonathan, thank you. The district attorney in New Valley who's supposed to connect victims of the school shooting with financial services is now facing calls for her removal. New Valley Mayor Don McLaughlin and State Senator Roland Gutierrez sent a letter to Governor Abbott asking him to replace New Valley County District Attorney Christina Mitchell Busby. Abbott appointed Busby to oversee the victim's compensation and other services after the deadly massacre at Robb Elementary back in May. McLaughlin calls, claims the DA has failed to deliver compensation resources in a timely manner. Mayor McLaughlin is asking the Texas Department of Emergency Management to take over that role. San Antonio remains in the high risk category when it comes to COVID-19 and more parents are getting their children vaccinated. Now about two weeks ago, vaccines were green lit for children between six months old to four years old. And so far, 1,077 of those kids in Bear County got their shot. Metro Health is offering pop-up clinics for these vaccines, including one at Traders Village on Saturday. U.S. plans to snub Russia at a big international meeting this week, according to an official. It's the latest spat amid tensions between the two countries. And supporters of WNBA star Brittany Griner say they're worried she is caught in the middle. Right now, she's on trial in Russia on drug charges, but the U.S. says she's wrongfully detained. The White House says President Biden has read a handwritten letter from Griner. In it, she says she's afraid of being stuck at a Russian jail indefinitely. Critics say the U.S. should be doing more to help her. On Tuesday, one of two Republicans on the January 6th committee, Representative Adam Kinzinger, releasing audio of graphic death threats called into his office. ABC's M. Wynn has the details. I guess I can't say a whole lot more other than I'll you naturally die as quickly as possible. This morning, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger sharing a compilation of threatening messages his office has received in response to his work on the committee investigating the attack on the Capitol. We know who your family is, and we're going to get you. Get your little get your wife, go get your kids. Kinzinger is a father to a baby born earlier this year. The audio posted to his Twitter account includes more than a dozen messages. We know where you live. We're coming to your house. Gonna get you, Mike. Kinzinger and Liz Cheney are the only Republicans on the January 6th committee. We're going to get you. Coming to your house, son. Gonna get you and Liz Cheney. <laughs> Kinzinger saying threats of violence over politics has increased heavily in the last few years, but the darkness has reached new lows. The committee's next public hearing will be Tuesday and will focus on the white nationalist groups who took part in the riot. While the hearings in Washington are expected to wrap up this month, a criminal investigation in Georgia looking into election interference now appears to be ramping up. A grand jury has issued subpoenas to seven advisors and allies of former President Trump, including Rudy Giuliani and Senator Lindsey Graham. Also subpoenaed, Cleta Mitchell. She was on the infamous call with Georgia's Secretary of State when Trump said he needed to find enough votes to overturn his loss to Joe Biden. Legal experts say Trump's call may have violated multiple state election laws. Trump denies any wrongdoing. In Washington, M. Wynn, ABC News. And back here at home, a stunning sight at the northwest side, Taco Cabana. Now, we want to let you know the video you're about to see may make some viewers uncomfortable. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. And it is not what you want to see when you pull up to any restaurant. A woman recorded at least four rats running around at this Taco Cabana in Leon Valley. This is off of Loop 410 and Bandera Road. Rita Longoria was hoping to pick up food early Sunday morning and instead of employees, she saw rats roaming around the kitchen. The TikTok video she posted now has nearly 70,000 views. Our crew went by the restaurant yesterday. It was closed. A sign on the door apologizes for the inconvenience. Longoria says she posted the video to alert others. It was disgusting. It was like unreal. It was unbelievable shock. I wanted it to blow up, not for myself. I wanted it to blow up because people needed to know. I mean, people can get sick, you know. The restaurant says the pests migrated from an outside source within the previous 48 to 72 hours. In a statement, Taco Cabana says the location was closed immediately for inspection and, quote, extensive sanitation was completed, end quote. Taco Cabana location will reopen to customers today. 612, 77 degrees.
And are you all caught up on Stranger Things? The hit Netflix series has just passed a huge milestone. We're going to have those details coming up a little later. Plus, is your backyard equipped for summertime barbecues? Coming up a little bit later on, we'll show you some easy ways to get your home ready for company. And just ahead, how local first responders are equipped to handle emergency situations. We're going to tell you about one of the tools that plays a big part in mass casualty events. Outside with live cam right now on your early Wednesday morning as the sun comes up and just scorches us later on today. Mike says it's going to be even hotter this weekend. We'll take a look at your extended forecast coming up. And welcome back. It is 616. San Antonio Fire Department's ambulance bus or AMBUS has been used in two recent tragedies, one on Quintana Road and the other Robb Elementary in Uvalde. It's one of 16 AMBUSes positioned across the state through the Texas Emergency Medical Task Force, primarily used for hurricane evacuations of hospitals, on-scene rehab for fire crews, and mobile uh, care for to treat injured people. Joe Arrington, a spokesperson for the department, says it's also part of their mass casualty response. In the case of people found dead in the back of an 18-wheeler and in the Uvalde shooting, it was used as a mobile morgue to transport bodies to the medical examiner's office. It's frustrating to know that we weren't able to do more, but at the same time knowing that they can be moved in a dignified manner. We could give them the respect they deserve. Now, there are two other AMBUSes in our area, one in New Braunfels, the other is up in shirts. Each AMBUS can carry 24 seated patients or 20 patients in beds. As far as staffing the AMBUS, there's always a driver and at least four medics on board. For more details, check out our story on ksat.com. For now, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, remember that crash we told you about here at 1604 at John Peace? Looks like it's cleared out. And let's go ahead and get a closer look from Transguide earlier. Before we even brought this shot up, there were some flashing lights out there that were indicating first responders were out there working to clear this mess up. But looks like they worked uh, just in time. And also, you can make out that there's a lot of that equipment that we mentioned also a little bit earlier. A uh, pretty busy spot throughout the morning. And as we see for people getting out there, just remember to take it easy. Thankfully, our First responders were able to clear that pretty quickly. It was there in the eastbound lanes of Loop 1604, not far from John Peace Boulevard and not too far from the Six Flags. So that's some good news and big shout out again to those first responders. Quick wide look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot else, thankfully, but also those active construction spots. Here's another one 35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. This one barrier installation will actually take place tomorrow night, Thursday, July 7th, and it's going to last a full week up until Thursday, July 14th. It will start at nine in the evening and wrap up around five in the morning morning. So overnight, early morning commuters, make sure you start thinking ahead. The right southbound main lane and left frontage road lane closures will be in place between Pat Booker Road and Farrell Road. Of course, this information is posted on our website. Grab those phones, open up your camera app and scan this QR code. It takes you directly to the KSAT traffic page that has a list of the current closures taking place throughout the month of July. And of course, anything else that could be impacting your drive time. Just don't forget, scroll to the bottom of the screen. Yes, sir. Thank yep. you, Stephen. Thank you. And I guess now is the time to do things outside. Maybe yeah, people yeah. who didn't check their mail yesterday afternoon <laughs> can check it in the morning now. Exactly. But don't put off getting the bills if you get them in the mail. Uh -huh. yeah. Very true. I understand. <laughs> but um, yeah, because temperatures now we do have a lot of humidity to deal with as of right now, but it's just not that that searing, almost kind of uh, overwhelming kind of heat that we've been seeing in the afternoons. 78 degrees out there at the airport and 75 up the road Kerrville. 2.72, which means there's a lot of moisture out there. That's the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, and that's how you figure out relative humidity. And wind is out of the south primarily, about 10 miles per hour. De decent breeze this morning. So again, we've hit 27 days so far this year. The average per year is 18. Obviously, we're way above that. And of course, we've been talking about how back in 2009, just two years after the summer we didn't hit 100 in 2007. We had all that rain, but and then every other year it was second and third place. So um, 59 days now you really can't compare as to what's going to be happening. However, we can compare what has happened already. And I know there's a lot of numbers on here, but uh, we have hit hundreds earlier. So we're way ahead of even the top three years. The number when we hit 10 days that was on June the 10th well ahead of schedule. I mean, even didn't even happen in 2013 until later in the month of July, 20 days, which we have already hit, which is way faster than what we those 
three top three years and the forecast shows that we are going to be hitting 30 days coming up here this Friday. That of course is also way ahead of those three top years. So if the trend continues, we are going to be breaking the record in 20 uh, in 2009 and those years also not only uh, was July hot, but most of those years it was August that it seemed like it was almost every day that we were in triple digit readings. Uh, temp again, temperatures are in the mid upper 70s right now, about four degrees above normal. We are going to make it up through the 80s going in through the late morning hours, 90 at noon and then again 100 later on this afternoon. It is definitely going to be a scorcher out there. And of course, we have the heat index to deal with. Now, the humidity should start to kind of ease up in the afternoons a bit more as we go on into the next few days. But then again, drier air heats up a lot more easily, so we'll have some higher temperatures. So no matter how you slice it, it's going to be blazing hot and then some 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today again makes it up to 100 and going into the next couple of days. Yeah, it's going to be hot and getting hotter 103s over the weekend and really no relief in sight. So um, yeah, yeah, unless something big happens since we are you know way ahead of where we were back in those uh, the top three years for the number of triple digit days, it is not looking good. Uh -oh. oh boy, I tell you, <laughs> so people are earning their their dollars these days, especially people yeah. that have to go up in like attics and fix up fix uh, AC systems. Yeah, it's very in the hot. heat of the day. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, see, and you had mentioned this earlier to you know people that, that have construction jobs outside yeah. outdoor work at distance, like roofers and pavers yeah. and bless you. Whew, folks. Yeah. I tell you folks, God bless you. 622, 77 degrees. And TikTok reportedly making some changes after one of its features fails to gain popularity. We're going to explain right after the break. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with rebelsis. Study once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down with Ask Rebelsis. your healthcare provider about Rebelsis today. TikTok reportedly scaling back plans to expand its live shopping feature to the United States. Financial Times says TikTok's efforts to get users to buy via live streams has not caught on in test markets over in Europe, but the idea is popular in several Asian countries. The personal information of 1 billion Chinese citizens is now reportedly in the hands of a hacking group. The group claims to have obtained the information from a police database. All of it is being offered for sale for about $200,000. It's a strange milestone over at Netflix. Stranger Things has passed the 1 billion hour mark in worldwide viewing. It's the first English language series on Netflix to reach the milestone, sitting right behind the Korean hit Squid Games. But Stranger Things still has about three weeks to pass Squid Games. I think it'll get there. It will get there as we await Squid Games 2. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 77 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA, including the latest on musician Carlos Santana, who suffered a medical emergency on stage last night during a performance in Michigan. And we're going to tell you about a pair of incidents that are being blamed for on fireworks mishaps. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto, Senator Roland Gutierrez requesting that a certain agency oversee the funds and additional services being offered to the victims in Uvandi. Coming up on GMSA, we'll talk to you more about that. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. We're learning more about the suspect in the Highland Park, Illinois mass shooting from July 4th. What police are saying about the disturbing warning signs leading up to that rampage. Coming up. And is your home ready for summer grilling? We're going to have some tips for you to help make your backyard the best on the block. 
And not into grilling. We're all broiling right now. <laughs> in the afternoons around here, but right now it's actually fairly pleasant. Definitely a smart play to do things early in the day. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Wednesday, the 6th of July. And thanks for joining us. Yes, getting things done early. Good advice. I mean, because we are on fire. I mean, yeah. if Mike could, he would probably mow his lawn at like 5 a.m. Right. But that's not nice to the neighbors. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, I tried that getting up early before uh, coming into work with them. The neighbors didn't. Yeah, work. not I'm at all. That. Yeah. So, uh, Plus your wife. If if indeed you have a, a lawn to mow, I mean, because we haven't had any rain around here unless you've been watering. I mean, a lot of the yards are just, you know, parched right now like everything else. Uh, we've got our morning clouds. Sun is trying to squeeze through in some spots there. And yeah, it's really darn humid this morning. And that's the usual kind of cycle that we go through each and every day with the uh, dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere back up to the uh, low 70s. But the problem has been that it hasn't been dropping down as much as we'd like to see in the afternoons. We've been staying with these numbers like mid mid to uh, lower 60s, which that adds to the heat index in the afternoon. That's been adding kind of salt to the wound, if you will. 80, speaking of heat index, is what it feels like at the airport right now. 82 Castroville and 80 up the road in Canyon Lake. Moles on the moderate side. The updated count will be coming out in probably about an hour or so. And throughout the rest of today, we, of course, are going to be seeing temperatures that will add basically 20 or more to where we are right now. Warm and humid start this morning and still enough humidity out there to get those heat index readings going. So you can't really get even that comfortable in the shade when you have some of that humidity left over. It is going to be hotter through the weekend. High temperatures will be going up. We should see lower humidity though in the afternoon. So get a little bit of uh, good news in this forecast and then even going into next week a good chunk of next week is still going to be on the hot side we're going to continue to rack up triple digit temperatures details in just a couple of minutes traffic authority been pretty quiet yeah. on the roads this morning a relief on the roads mike uh, let's get a look at trans guide 1604 pet booker over on the northeast side not really looking too bad over there 1604 at spurs ranch you can see just a few folks in that area of town but really haven't seen a whole lot out there these last few mornings. It's been a holiday. It was a holiday on Monday, but as more people are getting back to their daily commute, we really again just want to encourage you to take it easy out there. We like mornings like this. We wish we could see more of it. We did have an incident off of 1604 over on the northwest side of San Antonio, but that quickly cleared out and all we are seeing is just a lot of green, a lot of pavement and a lot of those active construction spots. And as morning continues, we will continue to give you those updates. But thankfully right now the update is good. Right now is a perfect time to head out the door. You can see the loops are looking perfectly fine. 35 I 10 no delays just yet, but we are getting closer to morning rush hour and with more people back on the roadways, we can expect to see some slowdown. So give yourself time and make sure you are kind out on the roadways. Let's get a look at Transguide one last time. 35 at San Marcos. It is getting a little busier, but we will get you through it and have more updates right here on GMSA. Steph. Thank you, Steven. Some outdoor cooking may be what has left a family on the streets this morning. They believe a barbecue grill sparked the fire that has destroyed their home in far west Bear County. Katrina Weber live in the 900 block of Stable Glen near 410 and Petranco. Any other homes damaged, Katrina? I finally was able to speak with firefighters and they told me that no other homes were damaged. But for a while they were very concerned because the fire here was raging out of control. It looks like they finally have those flames out now, but for a while they were tearing right through the roof. We have some video to show you. This fire broke out around 4.30 this morning here in the 900 block of Stable Glen. The flames were already coming through the top of that house when firefighters got here themselves. Now, I, I did track down the family who lives in that home. They say there were five people in the home, three children, two adults. They all got out safely. They believe that this fire was started by a barbecue grill that they had been using in the backyard. And firefighters do confirm that it looks like the fire started on the back side of the house, started outside the house. So uh, that is going to be an area that they focus on once they start their investigation. But of course, right now, they're just trying to make sure that this fire is out. Now, we have heard some talk that there may have been some pets in the home as well, and uh, we don't know the status of those, but we do know that everyone who is in that home is out and safe. Uh, some neighbors also got out of their homes because, again, there was a concern that the fire would spread. They uh, probably will be able to go back home shortly, at least once firefighters clear out. 
Reporting live in West Far West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, State Senator Roland Gutierrez and Uvalde's mayor says victims are not getting compensation they need fast enough. This is from the Uvalde Together Resiliency Center. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. And good morning, Jonathan. What do you know right now? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, in a letter, Gutierrez says Governor Greg Abbott appointed Uvalde District Attorney Christina Mitchell Busby to oversee funds for the victims and additional services. He also says that one family almost had their power cut off because of delays in payments. In other cases, Gutierrez says the money just isn't enough. Here's more from Gutierrez. Take a listen. We are asking specifically to have an agency that the governor runs to be able to run it. They can do this work and they can do a better job. I think that we have to look at how we're managing this crisis and understand that what we do immediately in the, in the heat of things isn't always the best solution. Gutierrez wants the Texas Department of Emergency Management to be placed in charge of the services and funding both he and Duvalde's mayor is calling on the governor to make this happen. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Country music star Kevin Fowler made a special visit to one of the Uvalde shooting victims. Maya Zamora is recovering at University Hospital. Staff there reaching out to Fowler after learning she's a huge fan. Zamora family was supposed to see him in concert this weekend, but because of her injuries, they are not able to go. He talked about the experience on social media, saying she was braver than he could ever be. Now to a warning out of Frio County. The Sheriff's Office there warning about possible deadly cocaine. They are urging people to get rid of any they may have. Now they are reporting about a batch of cocaine that is more dangerous than normal and may even be leading to some deaths. On their Facebook page, they say it is being sold and consumed. The sheriff's office has received multiple drug overdose calls possibly related to the cocaine. Anyone with information about where it might be coming from, they're asked to call the Frio County Sheriff's Office. And the search for a missing boater on Canyon Lake has ended. A family member says Robert Burling Jerry's body was discovered Tuesday afternoon, two days after he disappeared. Canyon Lake Fire, Texas Parks and Wildlife and Hayes County teams recovered his body. Sunday, Berlin Jerry was holding his two year old when their boat was hit by a boat's wake, knocking Berlin Jerry and his daughter into the water. The daughter's mom jumped in and together the parents were able to keep the child's head above water. Other boaters were able to save the mom and daughter, but when they tried to get Burling Jerry, he had gone under. I've grown up in the lake. I know what lake life is. You have frequent accidents that happen. Uh, ultimately, the guy's a hero. It's just tragedy for the family. This boater says the tragedy on the lake is a grim reminder that people need to be careful. Burling Jerry's drowning is the third at Canyon Lake so far this year. A man is dead after 4th of July fireworks took a disastrous turn. It happened on Monday near Highway 90 and Frio City Road. The Bear County Medical Examiner says 43-year-old Pablo Ruiz suffered a head injury and died from an explosion mishap. Officers say a witness and a friend were shooting off fireworks with Ruiz who had been drinking and that's when they say he lit a mortar-style firework from on top of his head. Officers say he died shortly after. And in another case, fireworks are believed to have destroyed two homes. Fires sparked up on Wildstone Place. That's near 1604 and Bandera Road. Flames spread to two homes, but no one was hurt. Well, this morning, many are grieving the loss of a seventh person who recently died from their injuries after that gunman opened fire from a rooftop in Highland Park, Illinois, just north of downtown Chicago, unleashing nearly 70 rounds into the crowd of July 4th parade goers. More than 30 people were hurt. Uh, ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Police say the Highland Park suspect bought at least five firearms, including the murder weapon, despite two prior police interactions, which some say should have brought his mental health into question. The suspect, police believe, perched himself atop a roof in Highland Park, Illinois, and fired a barrage of bullets into a July 4th parade of families now charged with seven counts of first degree murder. These are just the first of many charges that will be filed against Mr. Cremo. Authorities say Robert Cremo III planned his attack for weeks and carried out the rampage dressed in women's clothing. Investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity. 
Police say the 21-year-old passed four background checks before he bought the high-powered rifle used in the attack. I was trying to see where it was coming from, and then I looked up at the Ross Cosmetics building, and he was... He was shooting from there. Illinois State Police admits they've met with Cremo before. In April 2019, they were notified that Cremo attempted suicide. Then again, that September, a family member called police to say Cremo, quote, was going to kill everyone. Police confiscated a dozen knives, but no other actions were taken. Still no word yet on a possible motive. If convicted, Cremo would be sentenced to life in prison without parole. An arraignment is set for tomorrow morning. M1, ABC News, Washington. And trending now on KSET.com, Komal ISD is apologizing after miscalculating the rank of valedictorian. Smithson Valley High School graduate Ava Rote was originally ranked salutatorian, but it turned out she belonged in the top spot. The school hand calculated the students' GPAs only to find the miscalculation a month after graduation. She has since been named the valedictorian of her class, but had to forfeit a lot of scholarships. Legendary musician Carlos Santana is recovering this morning. Singer suffered a medical emergency during his concert in Michigan last night. He was overtaken by heat exhaustion and collapsed mid-song. After he rushed off stage and treated, he posted on Facebook that he had forgotten to eat and drink water and also thanked fans for their prayers. And time now, 641 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, summertime means grilling. And after the break, We'll show you how to make sure your home and yard are ready for barbecue parties. 645, summer is now in full swing. That means lots of people are grilling and hosting barbecues. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we are talking about how to prepare your yard for barbecue season. At a backyard barbecue, the grill is the star of the show. So if you've got a new one, consider bringing in a handyman to make sure that it's set up properly so that you're ready for that special occasion. Also, get all the supplies you need on hand, the tongs, the meat thermometer, the propane tank. And finally, if you have an outdoor kitchen, think about any last minute quick touch-ups that you can do. So might be things like installing a fan. Uh, even the smallest changes can make a huge difference when entertaining outside. Think uh, of things that your guests may need during a barbecue, prepare for them ahead of time. More convenient things are for your guests, the better. You'll want to have your yard in great shape before hosting any barbecues. Make sure that your lawn is well manicured and cut. Also take a look around for any potential pests, ant piles, or other signs that bugs could be around. What yard, right? <laughs> and while the food is a main focus of a barbecue, you still need to have some other forms of entertainment, especially if there are children attending. Consider setting up some outdoor games. An outdoor entertainment system could be a worthwhile investment. And if you have a pool, make sure it's clean and ready for the swimmers before your next party because people will definitely be in your pool this time of year. Mm -hmm. Especially in this area. Time now, 646. Let's check back with Steven. I saw traffic flowing on yeah. these trans guy cameras. I do have friends that have a pool but it's one of the ones that they inflated so I mean it fits four people that's all we need just a lounge that's it okay yeah. good place <laughs> will it fit in will it fit in the studio we can try that there it's us that theory <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get a look at traffic right now 37 at Pecan Valley we are not spotting anything that's going to cause any issues for the commute at this point it's been a relatively quiet start to this Wednesday morning so check it out 1604 at Spurs Ranch not a whole lot out there but back here uh, 410 at McCullough it is getting a little bit busier in some of these spots at Transguide so prepare for that as we are now in morning rush as we get a wide look at the map a lot of those active construction spots and as always we want you to plan ahead check out what's taking place here. I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Quick reminder, barrier installation that will start tomorrow night, Thursday, July 11th, or July 7th, pardon me, up until Thursday, July 14th, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. What well, you can expect, right southbound main lane and left frontage road lane closure between Pat Booker Road and Farrell Road. Of course, this information is on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. You can find a current list of closures there. Just scroll to the bottom of the page, but right now it looks like things are moving just fine. Mike found a hot dog with the right idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's a cute picture. Yeah, it's a, it's a great looking picture. Uh, some shade would really help out with that as well. But yeah, any, so there's one of those little uh, pools right there. And yeah. no matter the pool and on the serious side, you know, there's designated drivers, designated lifeguard. Oh, yeah. We're mm -hmm. adult pool, uh, lake, or anything like that. So obviously be very, very careful out there. But 
Uh, that was on the 4th of July, and uh, weather hasn't changed since the 4th, on the 5th, the 6th, 7th, 8th, and keep counting them. We've got some clouds hanging around here right now, and very warm, 4 degrees above normal as of right now. 79 Casterville, 77 up the road in Canyon Lake, and uh, we're going to be staying pretty steady. Clouds, high humidity, don't let temperatures drop down that much this time of year, and then we make it up through the 80s, more sunshine, of course, late morning, 90 noon, 93 at 1 o'clock, and yep, we will be chalking up some more triple digit temperatures later on today with lots of blazing sunshine out there. Once again, the tropics and talking about this, you know, we had a couple of uh, last week, a couple of storms, Bonnie, which is now off in the uh, Pacific Ocean. And uh, then the one that that was formed very briefly off the coast of the Carolinas. And other than that, there is nothing out there, nothing uh, according to the Hurricane Center in the next 48 hours that is raising any sort of an eyebrow for them. So high pressure, which is virtually sitting right on top of us. This is pushing down in the atmosphere. It's suppressing anything. What we're hoping for with this in this position is to get maybe a little wave to try and scoot on in at least for a sea breeze shower, but it's hard to get those things to move any further inland. But that's going to stay in place and actually get stronger over the weekend. It was we dry out a little bit more in the, the ground moisture and that's going to help to heat things up as well. So we're looking at hotter temperatures coming in here for the weekend. Again, going into next week, there was some indications or some hope that we would have a more substantial change in the overall pattern. That does not look like it's going to be the case. But again, what the hope is going into next week is to get a couple of these little waves trying to come in here to give Maybe a break in temperatures, uh, a little bit of rain perhaps along the coast, but again, that's strictly wishful thinking as of right now. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and yep, going to make it up to triple digits again, and it'll feel like the low hundreds. We are going to stay in the low hundreds. These are actual air temperatures, so it does get hotter over the weekend, and like I said, the one little bit of salvation over the weekend should be slightly lower afternoon humidity, so a bit more comfortable in the after in the shade but uh, still just blazing hot out there. Hopefully people can take cover this weekend or will have the opportunity to do so inside. Movie theaters looking pretty good, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah, they are the place to be. 650 right now, 77 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And it's something we all struggle to get enough of here on GMSA Sleep. <laughs> Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about which sleep position is the best for you. One in a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Got you with that one, Steph. On the floor, uh, anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Sun is up. Yay. You're watching GMSA. We'll wrap things up after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we will begin with the latest from the rampage at the July 4th parade. The death toll now at seven, the suspected shooter due in court, and new details from the investigation. What we're learning about the victims this morning. And an ABC News exclusive with the sister of Jalen Walker, the 25-year-old black man killed by police in Akron, Ohio. His family is demanding answers. And I'm here in Houston. We continue our Closer to Home tour, so we will be celebrating with our friends here and bring you a very, very good story about a young man who is cleaning up the bayou. Not all by himself, but there's sustainability happening everywhere. That and so much more on GMA. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, the nation's longest-running Latino film festival returns. Tiffany Huerta is going to be talking to the film festival's director about how it's changing the lives of filmmakers. Plus, it is meteorologist Katie Blake's last day here at KSET. But we are celebrating her by showing the best of Katie's science lab. All that and more today on GMSA at 9. We're going to miss her. We are. 655. Here's Stephen. Yeah, going to miss Katie for sure. But congrats to her as well. All right, let's get a look at Transguide. And one last peek at your morning commute. Really, it's been a, off to a quiet start. Something looks like something that's going on with the camera there at 281 at Grayson. We hope the vehicles aren't moving like that. But as you get a look there around town, US 90 at Nogalitos, getting a lot more folks out there and right now you are in the clear. You can see it right there in the map. No issues, no slowdowns just yet, but we know that can quickly change in the matter of minutes. So just always remember to buckle up both hands on the wheel, both eyes on the road. But as we bring it back to Transguide, pretty quiet start, Mike. Yeah, lots of clouds hanging around here. A very warm 78 degrees right now, and we are going to chalk up another triple digit day today and continue on through the rest of the week. And uh, yes, one of the nicest people you will ever meet, Katie Blake and um, Oh, we got a happy. That's not Katie. I'll tell you. That, that is <laughs> you know. Your nice timing person. is impeccable. I, know. Mike. Oh, I didn't know this. Happy, was birthday. happy, happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday to our 6 a.m. producer, Carlo Jaggi. We appreciate you, buddy. Yes, thank you for celebrating your birthday on.